Join us in taking a closer look inside the Nevada Wolfpack men's basketball team. A Reynolds School production, Beyond the Numbers, The Hunt, Part 2, in partnership with John Jock Productions, Fox 11, NBC News 4, and My21 TV, starting now. Beyond the Numbers. The Nevada men's basketball team gets a new look with the arrival of head coach Eric Musselman, and the players adjust to the new era of Wolfpack basketball. Sophomore Elijah Foster lost 20 pounds in the offseason to prepare for Musselman's fast-paced offense, and junior guard DJ Fenner stepped into his role as team leader. Get the behind-the-scenes look into Nevada basketball and their quest for the Mountain West title. He's this incredible guy. I mean, he's very focused. He's, he's very disciplined in, on the court, and he's very disciplined off the court in regards to making sure he spends time with his family. You know, his kids growing up, one's at University of San Diego, one's playing at Monta Vista, and he'll try to go off and go down there and see him, or the kids will come up. Uh, great support, you know, from his wife, Danielle. Um, he's just very, fo you know, the bottom line is very focused on what he does, and that's why he's, in a, he's an overachiever in the things that he does. He's very focused, very diligent, very disciplined. Doesn't he get better than this? Young buck, this is called high, high tech, low drag. So you got all that nice hair? Easy for me every day. High tech, low drag, buck. Streamline it, you know what I mean? You'll be there one day. Growing up in, in the household that I grew up, you know, everything was competitive with my dad, whether it's uh, us playing pickup ball, uh, you know, playing ping pong, whatever we did, it was a competitive situation. And so, um, you know, I was always taught that if there's a scoreboard, then you got to have a will to win and you got to be competitive and you're not doing it just to do it. The scoreboard is giving you a, a winner and a loser. And obviously, anytime you're competing, you want to come out on the winning side. You better focus. Got to focus right now. 20 minutes. Marquis, you'll start at the one. TC, come off the bench because of the three. Fouls. Here we go. Hold up. And I'm mic'd up. They gonna slide it on the show. Coach Musselman has instilled this competitiveness into some of the players with great success. Senior Marquise Coleman has drastically improved as a player since the arrival of the new coaching staff. Averaging close to 20 points per game, Coleman currently ranks in the top 10 scores in the Mountain West. He's earned the respect of his teammates not only through his game, but also through his personality. He's he's really uh, he's really charming off the court. To be honest with you, he. Uh, He's, uh, he's really comfortable to be around, and uh, he also has a little sarcasm to him, so it's, uh, it's, it's kind of funny, because uh, nobody sees him as a quiet type at all. You know, everybody kind of gravitates toward him, um, and uh, he, he, he can talk a lot, so. Oh! Oh! Why are you smart? He was nervous on that one. Let's go, let's go. Coleman hasn't always been at the forefront of Nevada basketball. While sharing minutes with Deontay Burton early in his sophomore season, Coleman suffered a severe eye injury that benched him for five games and limited his role on the team. You end up, you end up switching. You have a car, right? No, that's Ike. Ike, so shooter. I was 80-20. Um, my vision, you know, was very impaired. Um, so I forgot what game it was after the Cal game. Um, I suffered another hit to my eye, which, you know, I, I was like, I need surgery. And it happened, uh, I had a cataract in my eye. So, you know, I had to have that removed and I ended up missing five games. You know, when I came back, it was, it was kind of tough because we were already in conference play. I think I missed three conference games. And I came back to the UNLV game and I, you know, it was hard for me to, you know, kind of get my step back. 
you know, that was pretty much a tough year for me. Looking back now, I would say you can overcome adversity. That's one of the biggest things because that was, you know, a very tough time I had to get through. And I feel like I've done a great job of overcoming that. And, you know, adversity is just going to continue throughout your life. Obstacles are going to continue to get in your way. You just have to find a way to overcome it. He's grown a lot. Um, he has been able to turn into a guy who can take over the game and uh, score needed uh, points in uh, clutch situations. And um, we saw glimpses of that uh, throughout his junior year. Uh, but then senior year, it's like he's able to do it on a nightly basis. So you can definitely see him mature and grow as a, as a senior point guard. Hurry up, hurry up, get him. And, you know, I'm having you know, my breakout year this year. And like I said, through, through hard work, things can prevail for you. So that would be my, you know, stance for this year. and for what I brought to this program and what, you know, incoming freshmen could, could look upon, things like that to learn from. Yeah, that was a physical game. I mean, I've mentioned in a lot of interviews, I don't, we, I don't, we don't, we don't like you know, being Yeah, and I want sure, you to talk intelligent. <laughs> and I'm sure they don't like us, so, you know, games like that is always going to happen between two rivalries. I've developed a really good bond in a short time with guys like Luke and, and Marquise Coleman and, and TC. I mean, those guys lay it on the line every night for us. They practice hard every single day. And they've been such a pleasure to coach. We're going to really miss them. And I get emotional even thinking about, um, you know, their last game against New Mexico uh, because they meant so much to this program. Stay tuned for more of Beyond the Numbers. And now back to Beyond the Numbers. I was playing at Brexville High School in Cleveland, Ohio, and um, had taken visits to Nevada, Western Illinois, Boston College, University of San Diego, and Cleveland State. And uh, just had a connection with the college coach there, Jim Bravelli. Um, Obviously, the weather in San Diego kind of made it easy, but I felt like I could be a part of an NCAA tournament team at, at, at USD. And my freshman and senior year uh, were the first two teams that ever in the history of the school made the NCAA tournament, something to this day that I take great pride in. There was only four of us uh, that played in both those tournaments, and, and um, those all four of us are best friends. And so I think that's one of the things that attracted me to coaching at the college level was was the impact that, that it had on me and that, that it still has as a 51 year old man uh, to be able to still connect with my college teammates and see them uh, three of them have come on different road trips and been around our current team so all those things I think is what make college lifetime experience is something that I wanted to be a part of nobody wanted the towels <laughs> so somebody did take some and we got a new coach, Hank Egan. Coach Egan came from the Air Force where he had been there for a long time. And so our laid back atmosphere quickly changed to a disciplined military type atmosphere, which for us at the University of San Diego was like culture shock. Um, but through time, I, I, I realized what a great man Coach Egan was and, 
And, um, you know, he ended up coaching Chris Grant, who was the general manager of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Mike Brown, who was the head coach of the Lakers and the, and the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, and, and he coached Greg Popovich. And so he's, he, he mentored so many people. Um, and then to think that my college coach would end up being my assistant coach with the Golden State Warriors was really neat. Uh, to have somebody sitting next to me the first time that I got a head coaching job at the NBA level and somebody that I had great trust with. Um, and Coach Egan had done that with, with Mike Brown and with Greg Popovich. So uh, it shows you the type of relationship that, that my head coach in college had with, with the people that he coached. After a successful career as a college player, Eric eventually followed his father's footsteps into coaching, where he would become the fastest coach to win 100 games in the CBA. When you're 23 years old and you're coaching pro athletes, I mean, the first advice that my dad gave me was make sure you go out and get players who've played for great coaches that are smart players. So what we did that year is I went out and got, I think we had four Indiana players that Bobby Knight had coached. Um, Craig Neal was also part of some of our first teams and Craig Neal's dad was a high school coach. Um, but Keith Smart was on that team, Jimmy Thomas. Um, so we wanted to try to get guys that maybe didn't need a lot of coaching because I knew my deficiencies at my age, I, I was too inexperienced. But um, we were extremely organized as a staff. We had great energy and enthusiasm. Uh, we had, ended up, you know, playing for a, for a CBA championship. Coach's wife, Danielle, also experienced success early in her career as a sports reporter for ESPN, Fox News, and NFL Network. Danielle met Coach when their professional careers crossed paths and their passion for sports helped cement their love. I was never a huge college basketball fan because going to Florida State, it's just not a, you know, a school like that. And then at one point I worked in Kansas City as a local sports anchor and reporter and I got a chance to cover KU. And after I saw college basketball, you know, Kansas style, I was hooked and I really loved college basketball ever since then. So, I mean, I'm just a lover of all sports. It doesn't matter if, if it's a team that I'm following, it could be lacrosse, it could be swimming. You know, I just love competition and I love sports. So. Wichita State's losing at home. Yeah, I saw that. That's the game, it was, how it's can, at halftime. How can um, something, a team win at home? Mary, what are you talking about? No, like we play at home today, they call it home. It's not in our home. It's oh, at our Lawler Arena. Oh, yeah. It's That's like what's called house. home. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, it would be hard to play a game inside of our house. Because <laughs> then they wouldn't be any room. You want to play Fresno State in this house? <laughs> Oh, and then that's called the home game. I don't think mommy would like, that's a lot of balls flying around <laughs> the glass and the vases, don't you think? Yeah. Wouldn't be good. <laughs> Two prominent sports personalities, Eric and Danielle, are used to sharing the spotlight. But that focus has altered since the birth of their daughter, Mariah. Oh, um, Carol Lawson calling this game? Yeah. I met Danielle at a coaching seminar. She was up on stage. Uh, David and Dana Pump had an event in Los Angeles, and I was sitting in the back of the room with Lawrence Frank, who at the time was the head coach of the New Jersey Nets. And when she got up to speak, I said, that's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And, and Lawrence said, well, go talk to her when this is over. And so I went up where she was in a group of people. I came back. Lawrence said, did you get a chance to talk to her? And I said, no, nah, she's too tall. She's taller than me. I can't. I just walked away. And Lawrence threw his pen up in the air and he goes, I'll go get her phone number for you right now. And he walked over, he came back, he goes, yeah, you got no shot with her. I was a sports anchor before um, I stopped working a couple of years ago. And it's funny because a friend, a friend of mine was supposed to host this panel, Doug Gottlieb, and he backed out at the last minute. So I ended up being the host of this panel and Eric was in the audience. So we met that day and we were basically together ever since then. Eventually there was a, um, a, a pool uh, party with food and so I ended up walking up and, and um, got her phone number and then the, I guess the rest was history. Do you remember your first date? I do. <laughs> I remember our first date vividly, yep. Do you mind sharing it with us? We went to a Cuban restaurant in Walnut Creek, California. We went to dinner. Um, had a great dinner and, and uh, then went into the, into the city in San Francisco. And then from there we ended up at a club in downtown, I think Oakland maybe. It was really fun. 
Um, and it's funny because I think back and uh, I don't know the last time we've been in a club since then, but that happened on our first date and I guess it worked. <laughs> I had an unbelievable time and then one date led to another and before I knew it, I was married and, and had a daughter. <laughs> and you know he's so dramatic and then once he gets home like I'm the enforcer my daughter is not afraid of him <laughs> I'm like yell at her like you would yell at your players and it just doesn't happen discipline um, understanding the importance of being on time understanding work ethic all those things will help them have a successful life life as they get older he's just a big softy and um, he's a great dad uh, his heart is so big for his kids and for me that I, I really feel lucky. I, I honestly believe that no one, will, no one loves their family as much as Eric loves his family. Um, and it's awesome, you know, we feel lucky because of that. But he's a great dad, but he's not what you would think he would be. I mean, I think if you see him coach, you would think he would be, you know, a big strict enforcer and he's just not. <laughs> so the dog's name for sure is, did you tell your grandma? And Aunt Kim, what the dog's name is going to be? Grandma didn't like the Swish. name of the dog. Grandma? <laughs> I thought it was cute. Kim likes naming the dog Swish. Grandma's. <laughs> That's actually kind of dumb. A Swish hater. We <laughs> <laughs> told. No, we were talking about names for the dog. As no, you guys, we were talking about names for the dog, and we were like, let's just name the dog Eric, so we can just run around and just yell, and we can just yell at Eric and the dog just in one, like, sentence. Right, it's easier for me and Mariah. <laughs> well, I know that, like, after losses, I, you know, I take losing, you know, really hard, but when you walk in and then you have a beautiful wife and a beautiful daughter, it kind of changes things. I think sons are a little bit harder uh, you know, they understand the male-male thing, and, and with my daughter, she's so innocent that it's hard to be in a bad mood after a loss when she's bopping around the house and smiling and, and is full of so much energy. Um, but it's changed me for sure because it's a whole different perspective. With my two sons, it was always watching games or going to games. With my daughter, it's watching her play, I dress up with with uh, her dolls and, and so she has a completely different outlook than my sons obviously did. There's nothing that's more important to me than my family and what I, I look at it like you know my family is right here in the middle and then I just kind of created you know whatever else is going to have to work with that you know there's nothing that is going to um, make me not be able to get that quality time that I need with my family and my daughter and I love picking her up from school and I love volunteering in her classroom and those are the things that I am not willing to sacrifice anymore, you know. Join us when we return with Beyond the Numbers. Thanks for joining us for Beyond the Numbers. Going back through our losses and try to figure out what could have we done 
a better job of as a staff uh, to pre, you know to, to help us late game situations how can we uh, you know do we need a timeout in that situation do we want to foul a different guy all those scenarios uh, you try to play out in your mind before uh, they happen in the game you got to have a plan for everything that could that could happen in, in tonight's ball game many strategies coach Musselman used in the NBA has been transferred to his coaching style at Nevada with the game plan driven by stats me Jordan Sperber a graduate assistant who played a central role in the team's success this season. He may not be well known by the fans, but the coaches and players recognize the importance of his ability to dissect data. Tempo free statistics are kind of just like the basics for basketball uh, analysis. It's just um, uh, your traditional points and rebounds, just uh, factoring pace into it, how fast you're playing. So uh, fast teams, um, don't get uh, extra statistics for, um, for, for more possessions in a game. Um, so uh, it's basically, basically a more objective way of measuring uh, basketball. Everything that we did in the NBA, mm -hmm. is, he's doing it in Nevada. It's probably one of the first college basketball programs that, that applied analytics, that has you know, a guy who oversees the player development, the, you know, the recruiting, the, the utilization of synergy in terms of recruiting. Like if he's recruiting you, he, you know, he, we're breaking down a whole, like a two-page outline in regards when we bring in, these are the things that, that you, know, you need to get better at. This is where we see you in the program. This is how you can help the program. You know, we want you to set the, you know, the record in threes. You're a great shooter. And then he makes everything applicable. He treats it just like an NBA team. It's no different. Last year I worked in the Philadelphia Sixers organization in the NBA. So that, for me, that was, I, I, I knew analytics and heard of it and worked with it before, but that was baptism by fire. Everything that they did was analytically based. And, you know, a lot of times when you get on the professional level, you see how that, that's the language that the owners speak. They know numbers. They know uh, breakdowns and details and, and you can you know when they were trying to get free agents or work on trades or put together a starting lineup and the, gen the coach the general manager to, to the to the owner those numbers really translated and you know in the college level I think f for us it just you know not as many people are familiar with it you know after last year working on, on that level you know I, I would anywhere I, I, I would coach in, in the future I would love to have something like that with me and you know coach must having spent that time in the NBA I think really understood the value of that and, and knew it would be a necessity for our program. Coach Muss is extremely competitive, wants any advantage to win, which is probably why, uh, stat, why he has a, wants a stats guy is a, any advantage, whether it's traditional or, or non-traditional, he's, he's looking to win. And you know, that's, that's what you want in a boss, is someone who, uh, who will use all of his resources available to, to win. People will see, you know, coming from, from where we were last year to, to the success that we've had uh, throughout this season, you know, people always are looking for details of how, why teams have, have made jumps. You know, people write books about these things of, and culture and chemistry and the things that you, you don't put numbers on. But, you know, when you start to see, hey, some of the specific details of how you break down your culture and chemistry can be formulated by specific details for your players or your team getting ready for games, you know, making them feel more prepared, making them feel, feel more cohesive. The numbers can help tell a, a really good story in that way. And, and I think, you know, people will be coming to us to ask the, the role that, that analytics played in our program. Stay tuned for more of Beyond the Numbers.
And now back to Beyond the Numbers. San Diego State game is say they're the best team in the Mountain West. Every newspaper article will show them who's best. Let's go! Throughout this season, the hunt at times has proven difficult, but these struggles increase the pack's hunger to be successful. Yes, this pack has tasted what it's like to win, but the goals of first-year head coach Eric Musselman are far from achieved. As these memories fade into March, a new team with fresh faces will soon be running with the Wolf Pack a program with newfound hunger. This basketball season might be nearing its end, but the hunting season never ends. Thanks for watching a look inside the Nevada Wolfpack men's basketball team with Beyond the Numbers, The Hunt Part 2, in partnership with John Drop Productions, Fox 11, NBC News 4, and My21 TV.